Introduction to variables. Let's pretend that it was Halloween night and you have finished trick-or-treating and you come home with a bucket full of candy and you don't know how many pieces of candy are in there. Well, if you don't want to count them, you can still refer to the amount of candy there as an unknown amount and use a variable to represent that unknown amount. So a variable is a symbol that can stand for an unknown number or object. Um, variables take many different forms. Most often they are written as letters, but you can also see variables written as a box, kind of like a blank to be filled in, or different symbols can represent unknown amounts. A variable expression. Let's talk about what those are. Let's pretend that you had your bucket of candy and your little sister got hold of it and she took out four pieces of candy. We could write a variable expression to represent that relationship of what just happened to this unknown amount that you had. A variable expression is a variable or a combination of variables, numbers, and symbols that represents a mathematical relationship. So let's say that you were using the um, box to represent your candy. The variable expression for what just happened here would be this, this box or the unknown amount minus four because your sister took away four. So we don't know how many we started with, but we do know this amount. Or if you were using C to represent the amount of candy in your bucket that was unknown, C minus four would be the variable expression that represents how much is left in your bucket. And here's another way to say it, if we were using the diamond shape, you would say that you had this amount minus four left in your bucket after your sister took some. It's important to note that an expression does not have an equal sign in it. None of these included an equal sign. Let's do a few examples of variable expressions, and we're going to do one, as you can see, with each of the operations. So let's pretend that you have your unknown amount of candy and you were walking home and you decide there was one more house that you wanted to go to. And you saw that the person threw in five pieces of candy. Well, if you started with C pieces of candy and that person gave you five more, now the amount is in your bucket is C plus five pieces of candy. If you um, were on your way home and you decided you wanted to eat six pieces of candy, um, here we are, here you are eating those six pieces of candy. The amount that you started with, and then you take six away, that means that you would have C minus six pieces of candy left in your bucket. I'm, I'm thinking that this story happened or this story happened. We're not, this is not a continuation of story. So um, I'm going back to the original amount of candy here um, when I talk about this story. Um, if you and your little sister were both trick-or-treating and every time you went to a house you got the exact same amount of candy, then if your bucket had C pieces of candy in it, if you put your buckets together, you could say that together you have C times two pieces of candy because you both had the same amount if you both went and visited the same houses. Um, it's important to note that the multiplication operation can be shown in several different ways, especially when we talk about variables. You can use parentheses around a number, around a variable, and squish it right up to a number, and that represents 2 times C. Sometimes you also see um, digits right in front of the variable, and that's showing, that means 2 times C, or this raised dot can also um, show two, mean 2 times C. And finally, a, um, an expression, a variable expression with division. Let's say that you had your bucket that had C pieces of candy, an unknown amount, and you wanted to divide that evenly between you and two friends. So you're going to divide it evenly among three people. Then you could say that each person, you and this person and this person, are going to each get C divided by three pieces of candy. So the amount that you started with, dividing it into three equal pieces, this is how much each person would receive. So we talked about how an expression would not have an equal sign, but an open sentence does include an equal sign. So let's go back to one of the first stories that we had. 
And remember, you don't know how many pieces of candy are in here, so we're using the variable C to represent the amount of candy in your bucket. And your little sister takes four pieces out. Well, when you get home, you counted your pieces of candy, and you realized that you had 25 pieces left. So now we can write an open sentence that tells what happens. We started with C pieces of candy, we took away four, and we have 25 pieces left. Once you have an open sentence, then you can start to, you can solve it to figure out how much, uh, you can solve for C to figure out how many pieces of candy you started with. So an open sentence has both a variable and an equal sign. One of the things that you're going to have to do now that you know about variables and open sentences and expressions is to write a word problem to match each of the following open sentences. So you can be given an open sentence and asked to create your own story that would make sense with this. So we're going to try each operation uh, telling a short story um, about, about this open sentence. So let's pretend that you had um, some amount of students in your class. You weren't sure how many it was. But then on one day, you all of a sudden had three new students join your class, and your teacher said, wow, now we have 19 students in your class. You could use the open sentence S plus 3 equals 19 to say, we started with some unknown amount, we got three more, and now we have 19 students all together. Um, let's say that I started with 25 rulers. I knew I had at the beginning of the year 25 rulers. And then I let Mr. E borrow some, but I didn't happen to see how many he took. It was an unknown amount. He just grabbed some out. Well, I have 21 rulers now left in my, in my bucket. And I can use this, I can write this open sentence and then solve for R to find out how many rulers he took. So R would be the amount of unknown rulers that Mr. E borrowed. Um, we could use the open sentence 3 times C equals 60. We could say that um, some students brought in some cookies for a Halloween party, and there were three boxes of cookies. When we dumped them all together, we found out that there were 60 cookies. So we could use 3 times C equals 60, where C equals the amount in one box. So if we took the, if we multiplied the amount in one box times three, that gave us 60 cookies altogether. And then finally, um, I started with p number of pennies, an unknown amount of penny, uh, unknown amount of pennies, and I divided them evenly among our whole class, all 27 people, and each person got 15 pennies. And I could use this open sentence to figure out how many pennies we started with, because I know that the total number of pennies we started with divided into 27 equal groups equal to 15.